Here's the RTX 4070. The Last of Us on PC has allegedly been fixed, and you don't need a GPU anymore. Hopefully. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet this Monday, April 10th, 2023. And we're going to start off today showing you off the RTX 4070, despite NVIDIA not officially confirming that this is going to be coming out this week. All of unofficial sources seem to point to yes for a Thursday launch. We are now getting pictures of not just the Founders Edition, but also third-party cards. This Founders Edition is notable because the 4070 Ti did not get one whatsoever, and it essentially looks like an RTX 4080 scaled down. It looks like it's gonna be roughly two slots, as you can see by the two little doodles right there. And after this edited image was posted by Video Card, somebody on Twitter followed up with an actual package version of the RTX 4070. It does indeed still have the 16 pin power connector, which I know was one of the comments that a lot of people had. It does appear like some of them are going to have the 16 pin power connector, but then there's also reports that Nvidia has loosened the restrictions a little bit, and some of them should have the regular eight pin PCI express connectors as well, which it seems like there are a few of them being leaked as well. You have the MSI versions, the RTX 4070, which some of them are going to have the 8-pin power connectors. Then you also have other gigabyte models being leaked. There's a pallet card. There's a Zotac card. It really looks like NVIDIA is getting ready for this launch this week. Let me know, are you excited for the 4070? Are you going to be picking one up? Is this where you're going to be spending your money? And that question specifically aimed at people who have been looking to upgrade, not do you like the pricing of $599? Not, do you think the 4070 is a good card? I'm asking, if you're looking to upgrade, are you upgrading to this? Let me know down below in the comments while I let you know about today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Morgan & Morgan. Now, I fortunately have never been in a serious car accident myself, but I know friends and family members who have. I have a distinct memory of being a child and being in a courtroom with my dad for an accident where he was hit by a distracted driver. And the thought of having to go through all of that just seems overwhelming, but not with Morgan & Morgan. They've modernized the injury law process so you can submit a claim and have it reviewed by a lawyer without ever having to leave the couch. You can sign documents, upload pictures, share medical records, and doctor bills all from your phone. You can even text message your attorney and case manager without having to go into an office. When you're injured in an accident, hiring an attorney is one of the first things that you should do. And with Morgan & Morgan, submitting a claim is so easy. More than 3 million people have trusted Morgan & Morgan when they were injured in an accident. And if you're ever in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less, and you can have America's largest injury law firm fighting for you. You can get started at forthepeople.com forward slash UFD or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell. Big thanks again to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring today's video. With all the new parts launching, it's actually been a little hard to keep up with, but the 7950X3D launched on February 28th, and according to AMD's website, they discounted it by $100. It dropped down to $599 on their website. It turns out that that was actually just a misalgorithm thing that Best Buy accidentally dropped the price on the back end, but when you got to the website, it was still $699, so it doesn't look like the 7950X3D is going to be any cheaper. However, the one that is cheaper that's like officially dropped in price is the 7900X3D. If you go over to like Micro Center, it's $50 off. This thing was always priced way too closely to the 7950X3D to actually make a whole lot of sense. A $50 price drop within the first month and a half is pretty brutal to see on a brand new processor. I, I just, I don't think I know anybody besides reviewers who has this chip did, do you know anybody who actually went out and bought a 7900X3D and either didn't wait for the 7800 or it was like, no, nah, I'm not gonna spring for the 7950. Let me know down below in the comments. But it looks like MSI might need to spring for tighter security because it's being found out that they were actually compromised by a ransomware group that has allegedly stole 1.5 terabytes of data from MSI systems. That includes things like software source code, private keys, BIOS firmware, and a ton of other stuff. MSI coming out and confirming that yes, this has indeed happened and advising their customers to make sure that they only get BIOS firmware from MSI's websites directly. MSI's had a tough time with this kind of fake software floating out there, even with things like MSI Afterburner. So having this much data taken away from them and potentially being able to be used for malware specific purposes on other sites, you should just be a little cautious if you're downloading anything MSI related. According to reports, the ransom was roughly $4 million. It's unclear at this point whether or not MSI has actually paid this, but it does appear like it actually did happen. And I don't know if UFD deals is happening. Reese, again, still on the double load shedding life out in the middle of wherever he is in South Africa. What do you got? I don't have much time. You can find today's deals here, 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 here. More linked in the description down below.
Thank you or thank you not, Reese, which is exactly what I'm hearing about The Last of Us's brand new patch for PC, as well as Steam Deck, surprisingly, despite the fact that Naughty Dog was like, hey, Hold off on Steam Deck, we're not ready for it. They did release patch notes that are supposed to fix a lot of the issues that people were having with performance and various bugs and included some Steam Deck fixes as well. But according to the reports that I'm reading out there, it looks like some people have their stuff fixed, other people don't have their stuff fixed. Did it fix it for you if you've been playing this game? Let me know down below. And your hard drive or your SSD is gonna let you know it's out of storage if you're planning on getting Star Wars Jedi Survivor. This game that's been delayed a few weeks has finally gotten its recommended PC and it's gonna require 155 gigabytes to install. That's at least according to the system requirements that they've put out there. The only weird thing is that they lowercase the B, so you, you're like, is it 155 gigabits? But no, because they also do it for the RAM, which is eight gigabytes. Just don't uncapitalize the B if you mean bytes, please. That's just how it's done. But also being found out in these requirements, you're gonna need a GPU with a minimum of eight gigabytes of VRAM or eight gigabits if you read them, but don't read them because they're doing it wrong. Capital B only, please. So we're moving on from those four and six gigabyte GPUs. It looks like eight gigabytes is now gonna be the way forward, which I know a lot of people are upset that 12 gigabytes is all NVIDIA is including on something like the RTX 4070. They wanna see a minimum of 16 gigs, but it does look like we're, we're running out of VRAM here, folks. And Samsung's running out of money to get from RAM because they reported that their profits are down 96% year on year, with a lot of that coming from computer and server equipment with the RAM installed storage solutions just drying up. This is their lowest profit in 14 years since 2009. Samsung saying that they're gonna be lowering the production of memory chips by a meaningful level, especially that of products with supply secured. So it does look like prices on RAM and storage might be going back up because Samsung's not making enough money out of you. And another problem that Samsung's having that's slightly unrelated is leaking confidential details to chat GPT it being revealed that three Samsung employees just started leaking internal memos, trying to get it to transcribe stuff Stuff through chat GPT when Samsung was like, hey, please don't use this for any confidential or secure information. A few people did, which is probably gonna be a key consideration in the upcoming AI age. What are you divulging to the actual neural net? What are you feeding it? Because that's gonna determine what you're getting back and have you fed it something that you don't necessarily want to be used for other training data? Have you fed it something that you don't want other people to know about? It's gonna create a new just thought before you start inputting into various different platforms. And SpaceX wants to output from the Earth because they're trying to launch their Starship in the first orbital flight test that hopefully, potentially might be happening this week. Starship is fully stacked at Starbase, according to them. This is something that's been in the making for several years. They've been working on the new Starship design, trying to get that ready for this orbital flight test. And Elon Musk says that it's ready for launch, simply waiting regulatory approval. And it's tentatively scheduled for April 17th, which is in a week, but potentially could happen during the time frame of this week as well. I'm excited for everything space whenever it does happen, which I'm excited for everything budget when that happens because there were actually two big AMD launches last week. He obviously had the 7800X3D, which I have left on the hot new set all weekend, haven't even touched, but some YouTubers have gotten their hands on that and the other launch, which was the A620 budget motherboards. And they combined the two to find out that, hey, if you're on a budget budget for the motherboard, you don't have to spend a whole lot and lose out on a ton of performance. So one of the big issues with the A620 motherboards is that that their VRMs are not necessarily rated to support something like a 7800X 3D or higher. They're really rated for the 65 watt TDP chips of the 7700, 7600, and 7900. They're officially rated to cover those TDPs, but if a motherboard manufacturer decides they want to increase what it can support, it can support the higher CPUs like the 7900X, etc. It's just not guaranteed by default. But in this testing, they found that the 7800X 3D lost only 5% in like synthetic tests and then 3% in gaming tests when going from an X670 all the way down to this A620 budget gaming board. So potentially not losing out on a whole lot, especially because as the reviews came out for the 7800X 3D last week, this thing's super efficient and has the efficiency of a 7700. That's not what it's officially rated for. The TDP doesn't necessarily 100% align with that, but that's where it operates at. This The 3DV cache makes it so you're not actually using a ton of 
power and it looks like it's probably gonna be good to go if you try to do that. And you can say, you know what's good to go? On out of here, GPUs, graphics cards may be potentially dead with new reports coming out on AMD's upcoming Strix Point APUs. Anybody who's followed UFD Tech for any length of time knows that I'm a huge fan of APUs. I love integrating graphics cards into the CPU. It's just one of my favorite things that AMD's ever done. According to new reports that are coming out, the Strix Point APUs, which should be based on a Zen 5 design as well as have RDNA 3 Plus graphics, could be a whopper of a performer because it's looking like they might have up to 16 cores because AMD is going to be switching over to a hybrid architecture, very much like Intel is on with a big core and a little core. So you get more packed in there, but then you can throw in the GPU that they're going to include, the 32 megabytes of L3 cache. It's going to be based on RDNA 3 Plus and run over three gigahertz, at least according to the current reports that are coming out, which means that we could be seeing anywhere from six to eight teraflops of gaming performance on a single socket AM5 chip. That is wild. That means we could be expecting a GTX 1660 to 1660 super level performance without a graphics card whatsoever on a single chip. Now these are expected to launch sometime in 2024. We're still waiting on the Phoenix APUs to come out later this year, which are gonna have the Zen 4 cores that we have right now, plus RDNA 3. I'm expecting a lot out of those as well. That's probably going to replace something like a GTX 1650, but to get up to a 1660, super level performance. This could potentially explain why Nvidia and AMD have just gotten away from caring about the mid to lower end of the budget gaming side of things because they're just like, hey, eventually we're not going to sell these at all. We're just going to be selling the CPUs. Nvidia has already changed their plans where they're not going to be selling the NX350-esque GPUs that they've put in thin and light laptops because of just how good integrated graphics have gotten on both Intel and AMD side to see this potentially come out in a desk Desktop, to not need a graphics card at all because you're getting 1080p gaming performance, you're getting rendering performance all in just one, one CPU this size. It's not gonna get any bigger. This should be on AM5. I can't wait for that day. I will buy it however I can buy it. I've shipped them in from China before. I absolutely love when AMD launches APUs, even if they don't release it to everybody. I'm excited for that future. Let me know if you're excited for that future down below in the comments and we'll be back here with more hot news tomorrow for you, my friends.